Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Wine with Jimmy channel here with your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to another video here that looks at wine production specifically designed for the WSET Level 4 Diploma, but will be applicable to many other qualifications around the world. Now, this is on the Red Wine Making series, looking at cap management techniques. And we are here on part two of a very multi-part series, um, a riveting multi-part series of six in total. Uh, both part one previous to this and part two are available as free content on here, the world of YouTube. Parts three to six are only available on my e-learning portal that has a huge library of exclusive content, certainly videos and things like written questions and multiple choice questions and flashcards and all those kind of things. Please visit winewithjimmy.com for more information. As this is on the world of YouTube, you can get in touch with any comments questions or concerns and please do so below this video. Make sure you click like if you like the video but please also make sure you click subscribe if you want weekly uh, updates in terms of wine education. Okay so we're going to be looking at the world here of um, cap management techniques around punching down and pumping over. So let's get rocking and rolling. So here we are talking about punching down to begin with. So first up, um, I have put the French terminology uh, up here on the screen. So punching down in French is pigeage. Uh, and that basically means that we, uh, we have a plunger, which is used to submerge the cap of grape skins in the liquid. Uh, and this can either be carried out by hand or it may be by a mechanized plunger. So think a little bit here with making a, a coffee, a cafetiere coffee with the plunging technique. Some of them are actually designed very similar to a cafetiere plunger. And that's because of course with the coffee, all of your, uh, your coffee actually rises to the top and you want to mix it together with the liquid. Exactly the same principles in play here with punching down. So that's what it is. Now, a few things just about it uh, on this slide. So carrying out this procedure by hand is actually, of course, therefore very labor intensive, and therefore there will be an expense included within this. Uh, it's therefore normally best suited to low volume production of normally premium wines. Those style of wines would often are called kind of handcrafted that have a lot of uh, sort of uh, passion uh, by small scale boutique wineries. Um, it is also only physically possible to punch down the cap manually and ensure adequate mixing of the skins in a relatively small and open top vessels. This is a bit of a larger picture, but really showing you that there's a big team actually operating this here. But generally speaking, this is a rather gentle process uh, and it's used across, of course, the world of wine on many different grape varieties. So really, this is kind of the obvious process. Now let's talk about the, the next one, which is something we call pumping over. But in French, once again, putting up the French terminology, this is remontage. Uh, and always sounds a little bit more romantic in the French rather than the English. I suppose it depends. Uh, so this is in a system where the juice or wine, normally the juice, is taken from near the bottom of the vat or vessel, and then it's sprayed over the cap of skins like so. So that uh, pipe in this picture, of course, goes to the bottom of the vat and it's drawing off the juice. And then this gentleman here is spraying it over the top of the cap. Usually around one third to one half of the liquid in the vessel is pumped and sprayed over the cap. It keeps the cap nice and moist during that process. So one thing to mention here is the liquid, of course, extracts color tannin and flavor from the cap of skins as it 
percolates through as it passes through the skin so this is the last one was much more about um of course punching uh, punching down and uh, this is more about percolation in this uh, instance because this technique sprays liquid over the cap rather than breaking up the cap the extraction of course is very gentle and usually punching down or other options like rack and return are required in addition to extract enough color, flavor, and tannin. So what I'm showing you here, it, here is a process of remontage on the left-hand side, but it will be done sometimes in combination with pigeage. So both of these processes often in combination. Um, there are the two last slides here to talk about are the two types of methodology for remontage. Okay, so first of all, we have aerobic remontage, aerobic pumping over, which is what is being done in this picture. So this technique can be carried out aerobically, uh, and that means, uh, you know, obviously with oxygen being allowed to affect the juice as it's spraying over the top of the cap. This is typically done when you're splashing the wine against the inside of the vat wall, maybe be it a, a big wooden vessel or a stainless steel vat. Um, and this will expose the must to oxygen, which can be beneficial for yeast health and avoidance of things like reduction. So volatile sulfur compounds such as uh, rotten eggs. And the reason of this is, of course, is that we are keeping really the cap moist by this process, but also introducing a little bit of oxygen at the same time. Now, you can do remontage, but you can do it really in a non-oxygen environment, which is like a closed tank. And that's what we're showing you with this diagram just here. So in this system, uh, what happened is that the vessel is closed and it's closed because we attach the hose, which is from the bottom. So this is actually not a hose. This is a full piping network, but that will draw the juice off the bottom here and then it sprays it over the top of the cap, which is often a rotating sort of effect. Now, of course, this is a closed system. So this is anaerobically. Uh, so this is important in terms of styles where they want to keep oxygen away from the must at this point. It's commonly used, actually, this method on pretty much all black grape varieties for all wines of price points and qualities and is also suitable for use on large vats where punching down by hand would be too difficult. Imagine huge whopping vats where you've got 10, 20, 50,000 litre. It's just sometimes not possible to get a, a little plunger in there and mix it up. Maybe there might be some indus industry where you can have a big piston plunger or something like that, but it costs a lot of money, of course. So modern wineries will have pumps and hoses installed on each tank today, uh, and pump overs can be pre-programmed to occur at certain times for certain durations, and of course, therefore reducing the need for labor, but also strategizing the remontage and the pumping over. So making sure, therefore, that really at the right times, the cap is getting moist, reducing problems with vol volatile sulfur compounds, which can be a little bit of a problem in a closed environment like this, uh, and also uh, um, extracting the tannin, the color, and the flavor that you wish. Okay, so that brings me to the conclusion of part two here on uh, as a free video on YouTube. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you wish to then study further about rack and return, the Ganymede tanks, rotary fermenters, and then other options around red wine making cap management, then please, you'll have to go across to winewithjimmy.com. And that is a perfect place for you to go and uh, register and subscribe for much more content. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember, do leave a comment or maybe a question or a concern. You can do so in the comment section of this video on YouTube. Always make sure you click like and subscribe as well whilst you're there. If you do make it to the United Kingdom and you come to these fair green rolling hills of England 
and you come to the capital city of London. Well, here in London, I have uh, wine schools and a wine bar. So come and see me for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Bye bye.